Hello everyone and welcome back to .NET Core Central, the channel where I discuss different topics of .NET Core. And today my focus is going to be discussing circuit breaker with Poly for ASP.NET Core microservices. The things that I'm going to cover today are number one, what is a circuit breaker? Next, I'm going to cover why do we need it for creating resilient microservices? And third is how do you implement it using Poly? So let's start one by one. So first, what is circuit breaker? Circuit breaker is a concept for creating resilient microservice. In a microservices environment, we have multiple services talking to each other. In some cases, they are talking in reactive fashion where they're using some sort of queue or even worse for uh, communicating with each other, which is extremely decoupled. And that's easier to manage in a sense that if the event is not received or you didn't get a message from a queue, you are just not reacting to it. Whereas when you are talking to a service through an HTTP, there is always a possibility of failure. I mean, even queues and even bus can have connectivity issues. And I guess you can implement circuit breaker there as well. But for coupled call, which is like HTTP call, uh, it's way more relevant where, you know, HTTP calls might fail, the services might get a 500 error, and it's important to implement resiliency there. What is circuit breaker help? Circuit breaker essentially is a concept where you try a service for a predetermined number of time, and if it fails, that many number of time, you just open the circuit, which means the consecutive calls do not even go to the service, it immediately returns until the wait period that is configured. Now the circuit breaker can be implemented on your own. You can have try catch block and keep the configured number and then you have to obviously keep it as a static or some sort of in-memory cache so that you know for a particular service how many times you are calling and beyond that what you have to do. So this entire framework you have to build on your own or you can use something like Poly, which provides this entire infrastructure out of box, which is really cool. So to do that, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to open up a solution which I created, which just throws an exception. And by the way, I have covered retries with Poly in my previous video. You can see the link up where I have a link to my previous video where I have covered the retries with Poly. Retry is essentially just retrying a service for a particular number of time if it fails and then giving up. Retry, the difference between retry and circuit breaker is retry will happen for the single call. So when your service or for a single transaction. So when your service is working through a workflow and at some point in time it's making an external call. Retry will try this external call during that session for the configured number of time. Where a circuit breaker is across multiple call. So first time your service gets a call, you are calling out to another service B, it fails, the circuit breaker will come back, or the circuit breaker will not be doing anything here if the configured number of tries is three. It'll just fail and your service will come back and it will return an error. Your service get called second time, it will work, it'll go, the other service, service B, will throw an error, it'll come back. And the third time, what will happen is, that's when circuit breaker will kick in. It'll say, okay, the last two tries was a failure and I have been configured to try two times. So now I'm not even going to make the service call because the external service is dead. So there is no point in making a call. So it'll just throw a circuit breaker error saying, you know, the circuit is open right now, so you cannot even go there. That's how circuit breaker works. And that's the difference between circuit breaker and retries. I want to make it very clear that retry is for the same session, multiple tries, 
where a circuit breaker is across the session figuring out how many times he's failed and then opening the circuit so that the call doesn't even go outside. Okay, having said that, now I'm going to open Visual Studio and show you the solution which I created in my last video, which just throws an exception. So this is considered this an external service error API. All it does is it throws an error, right? So I'm going to just start it. Okay, so this service is started. Now, now what I'm going to do is uh, I'll just close this solution. This is not important because it's not doing anything. I'm going to create a new project. I'm going to create a ASP.NET Core Web application. And I'm going to name it as circuitbreaker.demo. I'm going to select API and here I'm going to select .NET Core 2.1 because Poly currently works well with .NET Core 2.1 so I'm just going to go with .NET Core 2.1 okay so once the project is uh, created what I'm going to do is I'm going to go here and the idea is in this function call or in this uh, web API method all I'm going to do is call the other service which is running in port 5000 with the error API and call the get method on the error API which will return error so to do that what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in startup and then I'm going to configure the HTTP client Okay, so we have the HTTP client configured. So now I can go here in the controller and inject it in the constructor, the client factory and create a client out of it. and I'll provide the same name that I have given during configuration.
I'll just add the Newton soft. Okay, so right now the code is ready. So what's going to happen is uh, we'll try to access, we'll create the error API client, try to call values who should throw a 500 error. And doesn't matter how many times we call, we should be getting the same error and you know continuously fail, right? And we'll continuously make a call out to the other application. So as you can see, it's failing deserialization. It's just because the, the other service is returning 500, right? And we can put a breakpoint here to show it. I can come back and do a refresh again. And we can see here the response is 500, right? And uh, And doesn't matter how many time I refresh, I'm going to get the same error. It's just that it's calling the external service and we're getting 500 error. Okay, now I'm going to add poly to the implementation. And as I mentioned, if you want to see my previous video where I started with poly and explained about poly, you can click the link below. Okay, so next thing what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the NuGet package for Poly, but I'm going to add the Microsoft extension for that. So I'm going to add the Microsoft.extensions.http.poly and I'm going to add the 2.1.1 one or zero one of these work the three dot doesn't work because it relies on three dot i think this one should work okay now that poly is added what i'm going to do is i'm going to go into startup and here i'm going to add the circuit breaker for the http client So after I added the uh, namespace poly, I can see the extension method circuit breaker. And in the circuit breaker, I'm going to say how many times it should try to connect to external service during failure. I'm going to say two. And then after that, I have to specify how many minutes it should wait and not even go out and make an external call. And keep the circuit open. So for that I'm going to say time span dot add from minutes and I'm going to say you know wait for two minutes uh, because if a external service is failing there's no point in making call for two minutes. Uh, so that's how I have configured it. So now 
as I explained in my previous video also, the beauty is all the configuration for circuit breaker is right here in your uh, dependency injection configuration section. It does not even impact your implementation of the actual code. So you can see here absolutely nothing. I have not done anything. Everything happened here. So it is configured now. Now next thing what I'm going to do is I'm going to again run my application. And uh, we should see that after a couple of retries, from the third retry, we should start getting a uh, circuit open message. And in the code, we should be able to handle that application specifically and um, manage it in our code, maybe to you know, add a cache data or something. Again, even at the circuit breaker, we can we have a couple of um, actions, uh, sorry, functions. Uh, what is, oh, okay, I have a problem. I have to use the circuit breaker async. So, okay, so this should work. Yeah, as I was telling is, uh, in case of a circuit breaker error, you know, depending on our application need, we can do a lot of things. We can cache the last valid data and keep surfacing that, or, uh, you know, some fallback. So you can see first time, it's getting a 500 error, so we're getting similar error. Second time also, it'll get it. But third time onward, See, it is saying the circuit is now opened and not allowing calls. So circuit breaker has kicked in. And for next two minutes, it's going to do the same thing. And then after two minutes, we can see it will again call out to see if the circuit is, uh, if the external call is happening. So here in circuit breaker, we can have a couple of actions which are basically call back from the circuit breaker on break and on reset and obviously we can use this method to do some plumbing in terms of how do you want to react what are the message if you want to log something or handle the request somehow uh, so that's that's in a gist what circuit breaker is if you want me to cover more about circuit breaker and the advanced circuit breaker please leave me a comment and I will pick it up in my next video. But for the standard circuit breaker, that's pretty much the implementation is. And I can show if the circuit is still open because the service is failing and it'll continue to happen for a couple of minutes. And as you can see, after two minutes, I refreshed and it is giving me the old 500 error. I'll do it again and the circuit is open once again because it, after two minutes it tried, the service is still broken so it will again fall back saying, okay, your service is not up so I'm not going to open it again. So this is how we implement circuit breaker with poly for making our microservices more resilient. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you have not subscribed to my channel, please subscribe. And if you like the video, please give me a thumbs up.